Aloha. Penn Nation, what's up, guys? You're now tuned in to yet another edition of BJPenn.com Radio, the fighter's voice. As always, I'm your host, Jay Kinch. We're back for episode 99. We've got two awesome guests, two great conversations that I know you will enjoy. However, before we break down the guest list for this episode, like I tell you guys each and every time you listen to this podcast, BJPenn.com forward slash MMA news is your premier source for all things mixed martial arts. Breaking news, exclusive content, interviews, viral videos, you name it, we got it. One stop shopping, bjpen.com forward slash MMA news. Make sure you bookmark us, follow us on social media Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Google Plus. Set up alerts, get the news as it breaks. BJPen.com is the largest independently owned and operated MMA news site out there today, and we are very proud of it. So, for this episode 99, we're going to kick things off with number 5 ranked bantamweight in the UFC, Jimmy Rivera. He's going to recap his win over John Dodson, discuss what's next, potential matchups he has going forward, the title picture at 135 pounds, and where he fits into all of that. Always a pleasure speaking with Altera, and we had a really fun conversation as usual. And then our second guest, closing out this episode, the head coach and founder of the American Kickboxing Academy, the man himself, Javier Mendez. Javier returns to BJPenn.com radio to discuss this looming, enormous matchup between Khabib Nurmagomedov and Conor McGregor. We're going to get the inside scoop on Nurmagomedov's training camp, how it went so far, We're going to get Javier's reaction to the press conference, the barbs thrown by McGregor towards Habib, and a whole lot more. That, my friends, is one you do not want to miss. So there you have it, episode 99. It is a shorter one, but nonetheless a good one. I know you guys will enjoy it. BJPenn.com Radio, the fighter's voice. I'm your host, Jay Kench. Let's kick things off with Jimmy Rivera. All right, Penn Nation, please welcome back to the show the number five ranked bantamweight in the UFC and one of the hungriest guys in the division, bar none, El Terra himself, Jimmy Rivera. Thanks, as always, for taking the time to speak with us today, Jimmy. How are you doing today, man? I'm good, man. You know, training and working, the usual. Right, always a grind, always a grind. First off, man, congrats on the on the win over John Dodson. Uh, but before we recap uh, the fight at 228, I just wanted to catch up with you a bit. You know, last time we spoke was just prior to the fight with Marlon. Obviously, that didn't go your way, but you bounced back quickly. Uh, were there any big takeaways for you after the loss to uh, Marlon? You know what? No, I just kind of looked back at what I needed to fix uh, in my personal life, in my training camp, etc. And, you know, literally the following week, it was getting cleared by doctors so I could fight. The week after that, you know, we took the John Dotson fight, and, and that was it. You know, we focused on the next thing, you know, like, like a I've been saying that I tell my students and lead by example, it's, it's not what you do, you know, what is not, it's not what happens when you fall off the horses, what you do when you're after it, if you're going to get back on and keep going forward. And I try to be an example of that. And that's exactly it. You know, sometimes shit happens, you fall off, you get right back on and you try again. For sure, man. One of my favorite quotes of all time in this business is when Fedor lost, he said, the man who does not fall down does not stand back up again. So I agree with you hundred percent there. Uh, I know there was a lot of trash talk and bad blood between you and Marlon's management, Marlon's management in particular leading into that fight. Did any of that play a factor in, in the outcome or the buildup for you? Um, I don't think it was as much as that. It was more of, you know, me at one time trying to do too many things at once. And, you know, when you have a fight coming up and you have 10 other things you have to try to do, it just doesn't really balance out. So that's why when I have this free time, I'm still training, but, you know, focus on school. So this way, you know, my school can coast and, and, you know, stay on autopilot while I'm training for a fight, even though I'm still here when I'm training for a fight. But um, I don't have to, you know, stress and make sure, you know, all my I's are dotted and my T's are crossed. Right. That, that's a tough part, man, trying to juggle all these things, not only as a professional fighter, but as a coach, as a mentor, all of that stuff. That's a lot to take into consideration when getting ready to step into a cage and fight somebody, so uh, I, I agree with you, man. But regardless, like I said, you were able to bounce back quickly. Uh, I know you had said going into the fight with Dodson that, that it wouldn't be your best performance based on the style matchup, but give us your thoughts on how it played out. How happy were you to at least get back in the win column? 
You know, it, it played out exactly how I thought it was going to play out. I was going to be 90% sure he was going to run the whole time, 10% that he would stay in the pocket and throw. Um, I said, you know, it's either going to be, you know, a boring fight for a casual fan or an exciting fight. You know what I mean? A casual fan wants to see a brawl, but when you get someone that moves and doesn't want to stay in one spot, it's a hard fight and it's a lot more technical. And that's what the fight was. It was technical. And I was, you know, I was very ha- happy about the outcome. I know the casual fan wasn't, but the MMA fan was. They were very impressed. So, you know, it is what it is. I just had a fight like that to get the win and, and, and walk out there with my hand, walk out of the octagon with my hand held raised. Right, and at the end of the day, man, I mean, between casuals and true MMA fans, who do you really want to impress, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah. So I mean, at the, at the end of the day, it's not even like, you know, trying to impress the fans. It's, you know, it's always put on a show, but at the end of the day, you know, it's fun staying in the pocket and banging. It's not fun when, you, you know, the person's moving the whole time. True, true. Now, some headlines had, had called it a lackluster affair, but, you know, then again, those are guys that are pushing keys in front of a computer screen who have never fought for 15 minutes in a cage. Uh, does that kind of stuff frustrate you, considering that, you know, styles make fights, and not to mention you said it going in that this might not be action-packed? No, it doesn't bother me at all. You know what I mean? It is, it is what it is. Um, it, you, only, you only do so much when you're in there, and if a guy doesn't want to engage, if they want to throw a punch or two moves and stay at the outside fight, you know, it's not much, like I said, you could do. Right, you can't force a guy to fight, that is for sure. Uh, now, Dodson had said that the fight was personal. You had called him a bully going into it. He had claimed that uh, the UFC offered him as a replacement during your string of bad luck that you had last year and that you declined. I'm wondering, can you elaborate on that at all? You know, I'd imagine that it was just maybe a matchup against the guy who was ranked below you, you know, that being your main reason for turning down the fight. No, no, we just declined it because they wanted to do like a four-day notice and he's a complete opposite style of Linegar, who I was supposed to fight. And then they wanted to do it like three weeks later. And we said, no, we need more time to train for someone like that. It wasn't that the fact we didn't want to fight him. It was the fact that we needed time to train for him. He's a different style. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, you got to be, you know, my, my captain on my wrestling team when I was in high school always, always said the will to win is not as important as the will to prepare to win. You know what I mean? He always had that quote. And I agree. You got to be prepared to, to go in there and fight. You know, it's not like I'm going to fight for a title last minute. I'm going to fight someone that could possibly throw me back in the rankings and throw me back even further to get a title shot. So that's really that's really what it came down to. So I, I said that, and I said in interviews before, we just didn't have enough time to train. So when, you know, UFC came back and said, you know, John Dotson in June, we said, okay, and it gave me plenty of time to train. Get ready. Right. When opportunity knocks for a title or something like that, you got to take it. But when a short notice fight like that comes up with a lot on the line, like you said, not a wise move to take it on four days' notice. Uh, but in your opinion, is the beef settled between you guys now? Uh, I, you know what? He said some stuff that was stupid in, in an interview. Um, at the end of the day, you know, like I told him in the cage, it's all respect. We, we handle business in the cage, not out on the street. We get paid to do it. But I mean, besides that, I'm, I mean, I'm done with him. I beat him. Um, I think my personal opinion, he should go back down to 25. And uh, you know. I think one or two fights he can get a win and get a title shot, especially that Segudo's the champ now. You know, I think he could do well there. I don't think 35 is really the place for him. Right. Uh, you know, considering that Demetrius is no longer the champ, you're right. He has a much better opportunity to challenge Cejudo for that title. But looking ahead for yourself now, you wasted no time continuing to call out Dominic Cruz, and you added Cody Garbrandt's name to the list as well. Has there been any discussion with you, your management, or the UFC on what might be next for you? Well, I hope to find out this week what's next. Um, I, I, I kind of like one of the things, you know, some of the things Sterling said were, uh, uh, you know, he was, you know, kind of kind of downgraded my fight with Dotson, but then he was saying some stuff that I did like. You know I mean? I do agree, like, you know, if Sterling wants Cruz, I think Sterling should get Cruz and I get Cody or something. Let's break up that trifecta going on where it's always TJ, Cody, and Cruz. Like, I think it's bullshit. Let's get in there some new people and, and break it up and, and, and let's do it. You know, I don't think, Cruz deserves a title shot. I think he should need he needs to fight one time and get a win to get a title shot. So he wants to take that. And you know, if, you know, if Cody wants to get it back in there, I'd like to fight him. That'd be a great fight. Or kind of just anything kind of going forward, moving forward. Right. I, I get what you're saying. Just get some new blood in there finally. Yeah. Now, do do you have a, a date or a venue in mind right now? When would you like to get back in there? Um. Not nothing right now. Um kind of just going to wait and see what they say to the UFC. Um, I would love to get in there, though, definitely before the end of the year. Okay. Personally, before Christmas, so I can enjoy Christmas. 
Right, right. Yeah, I know last year it was tough for you, man. This year you should definitely take advantage of the holidays. Yeah, you know, Thanksgiving is not that miss, but when you miss, you know, uh, Christmas time, that's a big time. You know, we do big time family for Thanksgiving and Christmas. But when you do two back-to-back holidays, you miss both of them and really get to enjoy it, it's a pain in the ass and it sucks. Right, right. And, and you know, given all that you guys do going, going through fight camp and everything, I mean, that downtime really is – uh, not only incredibly appreciated by you guys, but much needed as well. So, yeah. uh, now as for Cruz, <clears throat> it was obvious that he'd be looking for the fight with TJ, uh, following Dillashaw's win over Cody, but you know, he's shown really no public interest in anybody, but maybe Al Jermaine, like you mentioned earlier. Uh, I know that's a fight that you've been campaigning for you know, to get that fight for a long time, but are, are you reaching a point where you're kind of giving up at Cruz? Uh, no, I mean, if they say, you know, they call me this week, we want you to fight Cruz on this day, I'd be like, okay, you know, I'm sorry, Sterling, but, you know, that's it. I mean, uh, I wouldn't deny that fight. Um, the only time I kind of really denied fights were if they didn't make, you know, sense in a way, you know, like the Dotson fight. Like, I need time to prepare for that fight. It's not like he's a Lineker and he's going to stay there and fight the same style, and he's a lefty, so it's different. Um, so there, you know, what people don't realize there is a lot of preparation to go in there. Um, it, you know, you can't, and it can't be, you know, sometimes you just take fights to take fights and you notice, you know, you're not doing as well. You know, you got someone like Cerrone who just jumps into fights and sometimes he does well and sometimes he doesn't, you know, you need to prepare for fights. I think that's the most important thing. It's the fights not won in the octagon. It's fights won those weeks out training and getting ready for it. Yeah, no, no, you're, you're, you're completely right there. Um, but, you know, I, I just mean, like, you've been campaigning for this fight for so long. Are you going to continue to campa- campaign for Cruz? I mean, obviously, if they call you tomorrow and say, hey, you got Cruz, of course you're going to take it. But, I mean, going forward, are you are you still going to be calling the guy out? Yeah, of course. I'm calling anybody out in front of me. Right. Um, <laughs> I would I would love. I mean, we had that date, you know, set up. And, um, you know, he got hurt, unfortunately. But I would rather, you know, he – he was a former champ. You know, I took out Faber to take out another legend would be great. Um, I feel like if I fought Cody too, I can end, end up end, end up retiring him and, you know, kind of do what I did as coach. His coach, you know, he, you know, Faber lost to me and uh, I beat Faber and then he went one more fight to end off his uh, his fighting career out of win and that's it. He took the step back, you know. But uh, like I said, anything can happen. I even, you know, sometimes you see – and you do get the itch as a fighter. You see Faber sometimes, you know, he's got the itch about competing, getting back and maybe fighting. But you, you don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. I just think uh, right now um, it's really interesting how everything's set up. So I wonder what's going to happen next. I mean, you have really from the champ to number eight in the roster opened up and free to schedule some fights. So it should be uh, interesting what's going to happen next. All right. Let's start booking them and see what happens, right? Exactly. Now, what about a Sun Sal, man? I mean, you know, aside from the rematch with Marlon and, you know, the other two guys we were just talking about, Rafael is the only guy ranked above you. W- would that fight interest you? Oh, yeah, that fight would interest me, too. I wouldn't mind fighting him, too. You know what I mean? I, I, I feel bad. You know, every time he's looking for a fight, everybody in the top ten are, are booked. So he gets the one in, in the teens. And then, uh, you know, he's on a good he's on a good win right now. He's 4-0 and right now. and you know, if any, I'd be surprised if anybody was going to get the next title shot. I figured it would be, you know, you know, the next fight for TJ would be either Segudo or it would be a Sansa because you know he beat, he's got a win over uh, over Marlin and he's on a four fight winning streak. So I think you know that would make the most sense. Plus he's beat TJ one time, so you know they're one and one. That could be a nice trilogy fight. Um, it's just hard because the guys. I think you know not besides being humble, but he's very quiet and he's not vocal. Right. And I, and I don't have anything against that, but you know, with the sport now, you do have to be a little bit vocal, but at least call out the people you want to fight. You know, I mean, I know last fight he's like, you know, what do you, what does he have to do to get a title shot? Um, and he said that and he was a little more vocal, but you got to be like that all the time. You got to be like that in your interviews too, as well. Yeah, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, man, and if and if that's more yeah. evident in any sport, it's this one. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I agree well, that, with you, man. That that was like the same thing I was saying about Dotson. You know, he's gonna be a boring fight. He's like telling me I'm gonna look up from the canvas. I'm like, listen, yeah, if I ran in or something like that, he probably would have called me really good. But you know, at the end of the day, I, you gotta be smart too when you fight. And I'm always seeing the obvious when I fought Dotson. I said it's either gonna be exciting and he's gonna stay in the pocket, or he's gonna run the whole time and it's gonna be a boring fight. You know what I mean? And you already know what the outcome was, and you know it was very you know tactical, and it ended up being you know one of those fights where 
he had to be smart and, and just kind of had to go with the flow because he didn't want to stay in front and, and, and fight. Yeah, he had to let the chess match play out, man. Now, speaking exactly. of, of uh, Dillashaw and Cejudo, uh, what do you make of the possibility of them fighting next? Does that tie up the division, or do things need to play out a bit more in the top five before we have a clear contender for TJ? I, f- I, you know what? I feel like if they do fight, it doesn't really tie it up because I feel like after they fight, TJ's going to have to come back up and early beginning of next year. You know, if they fight any year, early beginning of next year, he's going to have to defend the belt at 35. You know what I mean? He's going to have to fight again. So I don't think it ties it up. I think it just, you know, it, it postpones it a little bit. But at right right now, you know what I mean? Anything could kind of happen, so it should be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Listen, now, how are you doing on time? I got like five or six more questions here for you. Yeah, go ahead. Why don't you shoot them real quick? Okay. To... All right, changing gears here just for a moment. You know, since we have this huge fight coming up with Khabib and Connor, I wanted to get your take on it. Who was El Terror picking to win? Um, you know what? I'm picking Connor. I'm picking Connor with, uh, you know, TKO. I'm not sure what round it's going to be, but I, I, think, he, I think he's going to pull it out. All right. What did you make of the press conference, man? I think Connor got in his head. You know what I mean? Not in the beginning. It took a while, and Connor kept digging, and, uh, let me tell you, that guy does his research really well. He's smart. And a lot of shit he was saying was crazy, and people watched it. And then people started Googling and looking up stuff. You know, you start finding some, some stuff he was saying was true. You're like, oh, shit, you know, this and that. So he's very smart. And I think towards the end, like, you know, Khabib wasn't having it. He just walked off stage, and, and he kind of got in his head. Right, the, the beginning of the mental warfare. It's surprising that they haven't done this all, all along, but that, that press conference was certainly enough for me. Uh, Connor made some serious waves though with everything that he said, like you're talking about. Uh, but in particular with his jabs at your favorite guy, Ali Abdelaziz, did you take any pleasure seeing Connor roast him in such a personal, personal fashion? I think I I love how Connor was. I I don't like the fact that it wasn't open to the public. And I understand that there was like safety issues because that would have been even better. But, uh, he took jabs at him, but you know, if you're going to, I think what happened, you know, you're a manager, and I don't think you should open your mouth, but it is what it is. And, uh, you know, he opened his mouth, and Connor, Connor plugged away at him, and everything that he said was true, and I thought it was great. I thought it was funny. I thought, I think everything he said was true. There's no doubt, you know, in my mind, every single thing he said about Khabib and Connor and uh, Ali was true, and it was it was good. It was it was fun. It was fun to watch and just sit there. You know, me and me and my teammate, you know, he was already on wait for his fight for a ring combat, so we were sitting there watching it, and it, we were loving it. it. Pumped us up. We we're like, oh, can't wait to fight again. You know I mean? <laughs> right. So it was good. It was really good. Yeah, you know, the roasting really hasn't stopped uh, uh, on on social media, you know, based on social media. Uh, I see a lot of fighters that have given out the personal information and personal number of Ali and encourage fans to get at him. D- does that draw the really? line for you? Oh, yeah, man. I saw. Oh, wow, I didn't see that. I saw what I keep seeing, and I don't know if it's real or not, is that supposedly it's his son and then something about Connor giving him tickets to the fight for him and his mom or something like that. Oh my God. I didn't see that. I, that's oh. something that I saw, but I don't know. Like, I don't know if this is really, you know, Ali's kid, you know what I mean? I, no, I don't, I don't know if right. it is or isn't. You can't really tell. Someone could just made it up uh, a page and try to get attention. I don't know. All I know is, is that it, op- it opened the can of worms and now you get to see who people really are. Right. Now, does that draw the line for you, or is, or is Ali kind of finally getting what he had coming towards him? You know what? What goes around comes around, and it just takes some time coming around, but I think it's coming around now. <laughs> right, right. All right, well, listen, getting back to what's next for you, uh, how long is too long for you to wait for one of these matchups that you really want? Um, you know, I, I'm not... I'm not sure. I try. I want to get in the fight before the end of the year, like I said. So I'm not sure uh, what's going to happen. Like I said, I'm just, you know, I, I, right now, actually, last time I spoke to my manager, Lloyd, who's biology group, I'm just waiting for, uh, for he's just waiting for Sean to call him, and we can see what's what's up. All right, very good. Uh, are you willing to fight a guy ranked below you just to keep active if it comes to that? Um, Probably. I have to sit down with my coach and my manager before right. deciding that, because at the end of the day, I'll just say yes no listen let's focus on the right, right thing right. you know right. so we'll just well, I would have to see all right well either way man we're certainly looking forward to your next fight and the continued momentum towards that strap in conclusion my friend what would you say to all the top four guys to encourage them to take a fight against you whatever just just sign on sign that sign on that x right there where that line is just write your name that's it i mean I, I, there's nothing else you could do i mean if tj is tied up let's go let's fight let's get it going um, someone asked me, you know, if a win over dots that makes you throws you out of like a title contendership. I'm like, no, it doesn't. I mean, uh, uh, what's called 
um, my last loss was more of himself. I mean, no, I'm like, I gotta get this one with Dotson because I did. It doesn't throw me out. You know, shit happens, man. You got, you know, Marlon who got lucky was two top rank band weights and it just happened. You know what I mean? I thought it was a body kick. Sterling was going in for a takedown and just got caught and shit happens. It's just MMA. Anything can happen. You know what I mean? You get lucky like that. But right now, you know, I'm back on the grind and I'm back ready to fight and it's, it feels good to get in there and win. And sometimes it's not, you know what? It's not, it doesn't feel good to lose, but it gives, it's like it's a fire under your ass and you want to get that, you get the momentum going again. You get, you get, get that, you got hungriness like you did when you first started. So that's what I have and I, I feel good. And, um, you know, I'm just basically training right now. I'm helping my teammates. I got three team, actually four teammates coming up. I got Mike Trezano, who won the ultimate fighter. He's fighting in Denver. And we have our other te- three teammates, uh, Lyman Good, Julio Arce. And uh, Shane Burgos fight on the MSG card, so it's a big, big, big month coming up for uh, Tiger Showman. So we're all looking forward to for November to come, and um, and we're all fucking looking forward to next Saturday night to see Khabib versus Connor too. And that card is that card is fire. There's a lot of good fights on that card too as well. Yeah, and I'll tell you, man, I agree with everything you just said. But for me personally, I think that friggin' Denver card is is really something special too. Yeah, I mean, I don't know the whole card because I haven't looked that far. All I know is you know. Frankie and the Korean Zombie and you know my guy Chisano. Right, Mike Perry, Donald Cowboy Cerrone, uh, Raquel Pennington, Jermaine Durandamy. I thought I thought Mike per- I thought Donald just got hurt and he's out of this fight. Well, I I, t- I talked to Mike yesterday. He said uh, as far as Cowboy's concerned, he's still saying that he's gonna fight. I'm sure that the doctors aren't gonna clear him, but as of right now, I, I guess nothing's official on Donald pulling out. All right, yeah. But, I mean, we got some excited fights coming up, and I think right now, I think the biggest, you know, there's, there's some good cards. I think they're the biggest in the UFC is focusing on is trying to get some some big gun in the MSG card uh, for the main event. I mean, I, not not gonna lie, I was pulling. I mean, 165 title, Nate and Justin fight for that. That's cool. That'd be cool. Hell yeah, yeah man. Mean? More divisions. I mean, you, you can't oversaturate it like boxing, but I definitely think that. The more divisions for guys to be cutting less weight or moving up to a reasonable weight class, that's only going to be better for all of you guys and the sport. I agree with you 100%. But listen, you've been more than generous with your time. I greatly, greatly appreciate it, man. Any shout-outs or sponsor plugs before we let you go? Yeah, man, thanks for having me. I know people can find me. I have a school in New York City, 34 East 23rd Street. Between Madison Park, people come in, take a picture, even take a class on me. Uh, social media, you know, Jimmy Bear 135 on Twitter, Jimmy Bear on Instagram, and, you know, all my sponsors, Pro Beer, uh, for my physical therapy, um, E Clean Bro for my meals, Nutribio for my supplements, Tiger Fight Gear, you know, all those guys. I, I appreciate, you know, you're only as good as the people you surround yourself with. So, you know, all those guys helping me out and supporting me, you know, I'm grateful for it. Yeah, man, it takes a village. It takes a village. Uh, listen, always a pleasure to speak with you, Jimmy. Hopefully we can catch up again uh, once something gets announced. Uh, until then, my friend, you enjoy the cool weather and the changing leaves of fall and uh, all the all the hard work you're putting into the gym. Thanks again, my friend. No problem. Anytime. Thank you. All right, brother. Bye. Later. A hungry Jimmy Rivera is definitely a force to be reckoned with. I'm looking forward to whatever matchup gets put in place for him. Definitely a guy you will see challenging for the title, hopefully next year sometime in 2019. And honestly, one of the coolest guys to speak with in this business. But let's keep it moving like we always do. BJPenn.com Radio, the fighter's voice. Coming up next, a.k.a. head coach and the man getting Khabib Nurmagomedov ready for the biggest fight of his life, none other than Javier Mendez. All right, Penn Nation, please welcome back to the show the head coach and founder of one of MMA's most prestigious gyms, the American Kickboxing Academy. Of course, I'm talking about Javier Mendez. Thanks for joining us again so soon, Javi. How are things going today, man? Things are going good, Jason. Thanks for having me on board. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Now, listen, last time we spoke was prior to the Khabib and Connor press conference, and at that time you were not at liberty to discuss that fight. So obviously there's much to talk about there. But before we get into that, uh, it was just announced that Justin Willis will be fighting Mark Hunt in Adelaide later this year. I was just wondering if you could give us your thoughts on that matchup. Um, that's a great opportunity for Justin, you know, uh, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's ready for a step up in competition and this is definitely a step up for sure. Yeah. I thought that was going to be my next question, you know, big step up for him, but based on our last conversation, you know, regarding big pretty, I'm sure you feel that he's up for the challenge. No, he's up for the challenge. I mean, he's a world-class fighter and, uh, 
you know, uh, he'll, he'll, he'll show it. He'll show what he's made out of that day. Awesome. Well, another great matchup coming out of your gym. Definitely one to look forward to. Uh, but let's jump right into this huge showdown we have looming between Khabib and Connor. First things first, how has Khabib been uh, looking in the gym, and are you happy with the outcome of this fight camp so far? You know, he's looking better than ever. Um, I always say all the time, and I, and I tell people that, you know, he's improving all the time. His stand-up improves all the time. Every time he comes into camp, he comes he comes out a better striker, you know, better, better everywhere, you know. Um, and that's what he's doing on this one. He's better than he was for the last fight. Uh, much more uh, prepared, you know, as far as ability-wise, physically, you know, um, everything. Now, last camp, he was 100% healthy, 100% healthy again. Uh, only difference is he's, he's better. He's better on the strike you know, on, on this this time around. Now that that's been one of the big issues, right? Getting him to the fight at a hundred percent health. Uh, that's the big deal. Well, you know, people have made it a big deal. I mean, there was only that one little, uh, 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 you know, little little bad stretch for him, but it was all related to bad judgment. You know, he hurt his knee, and, and uh, at home, he comes into training camp still with a hurt knee, you know, thinking he was ready to go, and he wasn't. So, right. so that, that 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 knee related to, to two pullouts, you know, and then uh, and then what happened to his back, you know, the the, the, with the Tony fight. So that, that, that's the only thing that's ever happened. But ever since then, you know, he's always been healthy. It's just those unfortunate things that did happen. Right. It's like people are counting that against him when in reality it was it was just that little hiccup there. Yeah. It's that little hiccup, you know, and, and, and but they were big hiccups, but it was still it was it isn't a continuous thing with him. He's he's always been healthy since two thousand twelve. Right. You know, it's just that little one stretch, you know, but for the most part, you know, one year out of the five years he got plagued with injuries, but that was it. Right, right. Now another few hard days and, and then you guys kinda of wind down and focus on the weight cut, is that correct? Uh today is the last sparring day. Um and uh, and then after that, it's uh, you know it's the mid work and you know uh, Friday Friday would be the last really hard day. Right, but it's not gonna be that hard on Friday. So basically, it's just, yeah, today today's a hard day. Right, right. Now, b- before we get into the intriguing stylistic matchup between these two guys, I wanted to discuss the press conference with you. Uh, first off, what was your initial impression after watching them both exchange barbs like that on stage? Well, you know, originally, you know, I told Habib, you know, before this all started, that he's going to come at you with everything you can think of. You know, he's going to do his research. He's going to he's going to come in and throw some stuff at you and make things up, and this and that. And I go, so you need to come back at him with fire, like he is. And Habib says, No, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. That's not who I am, coach. And I said, Okay. Well, if that's not who you are, then then don't do it. Then what you need to do is stay relaxed, stay calm. And if anything, just smile. But don't don't get into a, a heated debate with him uh, on a lot of these subjects because you know he he's going to come at you, and uh, and that's exactly what he did. And, and um, you know it's probably the best move we did because Connor wasn't letting Habib talk anyway, so right, Habib right. tried to talk. <laughs> so you know it, it, it was the best move for him to have done exactly what he did. Now, did the UFC make the right move by not allowing fans to that presser? In your opinion. Um, from a sense of it could have gotten really crazy, yeah. From the sense of the excitement from the crowd, no. It would have been more exciting if the, if the fans were there. Right. So, did they make the right call, security-wise? Maybe. Right. Kind of 50-50 there. I, I, I hear where you're coming yeah. from on that. But, you know, as, as you were just talking about, Khabib remained calm as usual. Connor was definitely the aggressor. Uh, however, there was a lot of subtle insults being thrown out by Connor. In particular, I personally feel as though Connor was attempting to uh, insult uh, Nurmagomedov's Muslim faith. Did, that, did it seem that way to you? Did Connor take it too far at all, in your opinion? Well, in my opinion, Connor didn't take it too far as far as what Connor does, but he took it too far as far as what should not be done. You know what I mean? To me, I always tell my fighters, stay away from family, stay away from politics, stay away from religion. <laughs> Those are the three subjects he hit repeatedly over and over and over again. So, but that's who he is. So it's not like we weren't expecting he wasn't going to do that. I mean, most of the fighters respect those things and they don't touch him. Right. Not this guy. That's not his 
his style. His style, he don't give a F, you know. Right. He say whatever the hell he wants. To, to get into your head, you know, and, and, and he's not doing it because he's a bad guy. He's doing it because he's trying to screw with your head. And that's what he was doing. It's not, you know, uh, unfortunately in this case they do hate each other, so I will say that. But, but, but his antics are not because, you know, that's just who he is is what I'm saying. It isn't. It isn't that he hated Habib, so he unloaded on Habib. He unloads on everybody. When was he doing the Aldo? I mean, we can't forget how he started when he was doing everything to everybody before that. True, true. This is business as usual for Connor in regards to the mental warfare, but from what you're saying, it's Khabib doesn't bite. He doesn't take that bait. No, he didn't take the bait. No, he, 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 he got, you know what? He, he did as well as anybody could do under the circumstances. I'm sure he got a little bit agitated because as a fighter, you do want to come up, but you remain remain calm and relaxed, and then you cool down. Uh, and he remained as calm as he could be, 100%. Right. Now, as you mentioned there, you know, don't talk about family, politics, or religion. Connor also made some indirect threats toward Khabib's family and uh, went after Khabib's tithes to uh, Katerov. Uh, rumors circulated that Khabib was pretty upset backstage after the presser. Is there any truth to that at all from what you know? From what I know, it's zero. I, I called him. I go, how do you feel? He goes, he's laughing. He goes, great, coach. I, I feel really good. He goes, he goes, coach, he smelled like whiskey really bad. <laughs> yeah, he was clearly a little intoxicated on stage there. Yeah, well, who knows if. It was only on the stage or before the stage. I don't know. I don't know. It definitely was a ploy. <laughs> you know, he wasn't, you know, he definitely was doing it just to, to, to get his brand over. So, so good, you know, good for him. Right. You know, but, uh, you know, it, it, it was one of those things where, you know, I think he did, a, he tried as hard as he could to get Habib riled up, and it didn't work. You know, it didn't work. Now, has his demeanor changed at all since that press conference? Has he shown any added emotion towards the situation? No. Zero. Still. Same like everything. We're done in. October 6th, I'm going to smash him. That's, that's it. He, he doesn't change. He does no, no, no anger, no nothing. No. Emotionless. Right. Cool as a cucumber. Yeah, cool as a cucumber is more, more yeah. Yeah. Now, now, as far as the matchup goes, it's very obvious what each guy wants to do. However, a lot of people are, are, are criticizing Nurmagomedov for always rushing in during his fights and how that lends itself to Connor's biggest strength, which would be counterpunching. How do you see it? Well, a lot of people, they, they would be correct in assuming that, 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 that that's what Habib would want to do, and, and et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, the bottom line is, look, it's going to stand up. We have to stand up. We have to take him down. Okay. A lot of people say whatever they want, but the man's never lost a round. Right. So it doesn't even matter what I say because if he doesn't fight according to my plan, which a lot of the times he doesn't, and a lot of times he does, it doesn't matter because the thing is what I always tell my guy is this. I go, look, you, we follow the plan. I go, there's plan one, plan two. Plan B and Plan C. Plan C is basically whatever the hell you want to do. Well, right. I say to them, I don't care what you do as long as you're winning. Okay, so let's backtrack to when I beat fought Michael Johnson and he wasn't fighting the right way and we were screaming our head off and he went and did what he needed to do. He won the first round and he submitted in the second. Okay. Um, Habib has always done what he wants to do, but he's won every round. So he's always winning. So regardless, how can I come back and say, hey, you didn't listen to the plan, blah, 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 blah. He did listen to the plan because I said, regardless of what you do, you have to win as long as you're winning. Well, he has never lost a round, so he wins every round. So what he wants to do, he was going to want to do. So can I predict what he's going to do? No, no. Do I know what I want him to do? Yes, I want him to go out there and, and look for the takedown as quick as possible and finish it. But is that what, what Habib's going to do? I don't know. That's right. what I want him to do. You know, and, but as long as he's winning, I don't care what he does. Yeah, I mean, the, the, that was going to be one of my questions here. You know, when it comes to game planning, I know you don't want to give us any details, but there was that video that had recently surfaced of everybody in his corner, uh, you know, kind of imploring him to stop, stop exchanging. 
in your experience working with him over the years, it seems like he's been known to kind of deviate from the game plan. Is that something you guys are hoping doesn't happen in this fight? No, I know it's going to happen. <laughs> like I said, I mean, I don't, hey, as long as he's winning, do it your way. I, I, that was in what I'm saying. I tell him. It's okay as long as you're winning if you deviate, but I want you to stick to my plan. Uh, do you think that since this fight was announced that, that, that I'm telling them, do what you want? No, no. <laughs> right. I, want, I want the safest route. The safest route is my route. But what I'm saying is he doesn't necessarily do what I want to do, but he does because he wins, and that's what I ask him to do. At the end of the day, I don't care as long as you're winning the round. And that's what he does. So I can't be mad at him ever for not listening to the, the, the plan that myself and his father would want because he's winning. Right, you, you, you can't... Know, it, you're, you know, it, it gets us like, oh my God, what's he doing? We, yeah, of course. But that's how he Right, you, know? you, you, like, you can't I mean, argue with that at yeah. all if he's if he's winning the rounds. It's no. like, you know, right. Yeah, and I mean, they, they decide to... To, to clown him. He, he may decide to all of a sudden, once he got Connor where he wants him, he may decide to clown him and drown him for five rounds. Hell, and I'd be like screaming my head off, what are you doing? Finish him. Take care of him. <laughs> nope. nope. I'm going to make him pay for it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. He's going to do what he wants to do. You know, and, and of course, you know, like I said, my, you know, his father and myself, we'll, we'll drive ourselves crazy watching him do that. But, again, as long as he's winning, we're okay. For sure, for sure. You can't argue with that, man. Now, Connor's teammate, Artem Lobov, said this past week that Connor can out-wrestle Habib and expects a uh, first-round KO in that fight. What's your response to that? Well, you know, my response to that is that we can outstrike strike Connor, and I think we're going to knock him out with the first punch we throw. Right, anybody can say anything. That's what you're getting at. I, yeah, I think Habib's going to go right in there, rush right in there, and throw a right hand and lay him out. Boom, done, finished. And Habib is going to be known as the greatest striker in the UFC history. Right, so, right I, so I mean, I mean that, that that answer, you're basically saying, I mean, anybody can say anything about any fight. It's We're never going to know until they finally get in there and throw down. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. What's your response to uh, Connor claiming that uh, Habib has a glass jaw? Uh, I don't know. Was he looking in the mirror? <laughs> right now uh the odds makers they have this fight very closely matched uh nurma gamedov has a slight edge at the moment do you feel like this fight could at all be a close contest or are the odds maker just giving uh connor too much credit no connor's a great fighter man this is this, this, this uh, not too much credit not, he's a great fighter he is a great fighter so you know if you underestimate connor that's stupid. I'm not underestimating how great he is. He's a great fighter. We have a great fighter ahead of us. You know, I just happen to think I mean, he's a greater fighter, but doesn't mean Connor's not a great fighter. To me, he's a great fighter. You know, the odds should be like that because, I'm not, you know, this fight could very well go. I see this fight going anywhere. It could go five rounds. It could go one round, two rounds, three rounds, four rounds, you know, uh, the only thing that that I do see is Habib can finish him in everywhere where Connor's chances, best chances are in the stand up, and that's it. Right, more more tools in the toolbox for uh, for Nurmagomedov, whereas Connor's kind of his best his best uh, way to winning this is kind of one dimensional. Well, well, yeah, it's one dimensional, but it's it's. I mean, he's got he's an incredible striker, you know, for sure, incredible decision striking. He, he corners you, traps you. I mean, he, he's, he's really, really good at, at how he baits you and how he gets you to come in. He's really good. I mean, yeah, you, man, the man's a great fighter. I mean, I can't, I, can't, I can't never take that away from him. He's a great fighter. Now, Dana White has said that uh, this fight is trending to possibly do 2 million pay-per-view buys. That's certainly a generous estimate, but, you know, there's a lot of worldwide appeal for this fight, especially given the history between these two guys. Uh, do you think that this could possibly the, be, be the biggest fight in UFC history? Uh, I, I think it's, I think it, it's going to be, yeah, I, I definitely, definitely. Uh, if I have to base everything on all the interviews I've been doing, I, I would say it's, yes, 100%. Right, purely based on the amount of media requests, you would say that this has the most interest out of any fight you've ever been involved in? 
yes, I've already done for this for this fight. I've already done when I was told I could interview. I've already done five times as many interviews uh, uh, as I've done for any other fight than any of my other guys have ever had, or any fight I've used ever had. Five times as much. Wow, that says it all right there. Wow. All right, yeah. listen, Javier, so, you've been. So they... Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, man, you've been more than generous with your time. I, I just a couple more questions here for you. Uh, there's been talk about uh, Nurmagomedov retiring after defeating Connor. Is there any truth to that on your end? What would you like to see happen next for him, assuming he defeats uh, McGregor next weekend? Um, if, there, if, if everything that goes according to plan and Tony Ferguson wins, I would like to see, you know, a big fight Tony, you know, because I think that fight needs to happen. Um, so, you know, that's assuming Tony wins. If Tony doesn't win, then that, that kills that. But, but if, if Tony does win, Habib is going to win, in my opinion. Um, I think that fight needs to happen. Uh, but, you know, the bottom line is if Habib's father uh, is more leaning towards he should retire, then that's what Habib's going to do. You know, the, the, the most influential person in Habib's life is his father. And uh, so whatever his father feels his son should do, uh, that's what he's going to do. And uh, I don't think that the plan is for him to retire. I think the plan would be to fight Tony, and I think after that, uh, the, the plan would be to fight, uh, hopefully, maybe someone like GSP for legacy. Not not for money, for legacy. Right. This this fight's, this fight's definitely the money fight, and like you said, he, um, Nurmagomedov and Tony, they have unfinished business, so that would be uh, the, the obvious matchup to make next, assuming Tony gets past Anthony Pettis. And then, uh, man, GSP, what a legacy fight that would be. Perfect way to cap off a career. Yeah, that, 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 that would be a perfect way. But again, you know, that, that it all comes down to uh, those two making the decision. Uh, I, 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 my, my input on that, uh, I play second best on that one. I, I, don't, I don't have nowhere here, uh, the, you know, the influence of, of the father. So, and nor do I claim. You know, or, 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 or nor do I try. You know? Right, right. <laughs> the father is the boss, you know. And I mean, the, the father trusts me explicitly because he he lets Habib come to train with me. His father, if his father says no, you're not coming. He ain't coming. Right. You know? But his father trusts me. His father knows that. I mean, him and I think alike. He spent the whole about a month with us, and he is an incredible coach, uh, an incredible human being, and. Uh, he sees what I do, and he sees how much I care about Habib and how much I take care of him. So he he trusts me. He knows that that I I won't do anything that's going to jeopardize Habib's fighting style. I'm only enhancing it, and he knows that. And that's why, you know, people say, "Do I ever talk to his father?" No, we, we can't communicate with each other. Uh, we don't talk about the game plan. We already know the game plan. It's just a matter of uh, how we attack it. You know, what's the steps necessary? to be able to get Habib to, 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 to work the game plan properly. So, you know, that's what's going on all the time. So, you know, when people ask, them, do I ever talk to him? I go, no, I never talked to him, but I know what he wants. And he knows he knows that I know he, that what he wants. Right, and I mean, the, the coach and fighter relationship's kind of a bit of a father-son relationship to begin with, and what better judge than actually having Habib's father to 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 give you that that uh that blessing of saying hey i know you have his best interests in mind so um you know same same kind of situation but uh listen man yeah. go ahead no, go ahead uh in conclusion man just you know give us your prediction for the fight if you have one how does it all play out next saturday does uh does nurmagomedov punish connor for five rounds or does he get the finish early well, you know, I, I always predict, you know, five-round war, and, you know, I'm sticking to my five-round war. I'll be ready for five rounds, and uh, that's what I predict. I predict the victory, and I predict the five-round war. All right. Uh, anything you think we missed or anything else you'd like to say before we let you go? The floor is yours, my friend. Uh, uh, maybe the fact that uh, Zubaira, Habib's training partner, is going to be fighting Connor's uh, 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 best buddy, Arta, in, uh, in Canada. Uh, because they didn't want they were they were going to put him on the same card on this one here, but uh, you know Connor didn't want to didn't didn't want to uh, have his friend fight when he's fighting because he's too worried about his friend, you know. So so they're fighting on uh, 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 you know 
October 27th in, in, uh, in Canada. And the, and the saga continues with the beef between the, these two guys, right? Yeah, the saga continues, yes. Yes, 100%. Because, I mean, that, that, that's, uh, that's, just real, that's, that's a real beef right there. You know? And, like, you know, for me, hopefully they just keep it professional and they just keep it in the cage, you know. The, those kind of things need to be settled in the cage. That's it. This is, this is not a – to me, this is a sport, and, and let's keep it a sport, you know. Let's keep it a sport. That's not – Let's not let's not do something that that's against the law, you know. Keep it a sport. This is a sport. We're doing this for the entertainment of the fans, you know. And and so to me, it's let's keep it a sport, you know. Let's let's, let's be sporty about this thing. Let's let's do it right. And not to mention, I mean, you're it's prize fighting. At the end of the day, you go in there and fight. There's no better way to settle differences than to go in there and scrap. So. You're, 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 you're fighting for money, you know, you're entertaining the crowd, you know, this is what it's about, this is not real life thugs, you know, this is a sport, you know, and, and that's my only thing on it, that's why, you know, like, like with me, with Connor, it's like, hey, I don't have any personal issues with him ever, I never will, I'll never have confrontations with him, I'm not the, I'm not the fighter, I, I'm, you know, I'm the coach, my, my, my thing is, hey, I'm here to talk good about my guy, you know, I'm not here to attack him, you know, I'm not here to attack any fighter. I never have and never will. You know, it, it's it's one of those things where, you know, I know where my job is. My job is to coach my guy. My, my job isn't to fight with Connor and fight with Artem. I, I, you know, <laughs> right. uh, I'm, not fine with, I'm not fine with any of those guys. I'm a coach. Right, you maintain that level of professionalism. That is for sure, man. All right, listen, it's been a pleasure, as always, speaking with you today, Javier. Greatly appreciate the time, and I know the entire world is very excited for this showdown next weekend. Uh, hopefully we can catch up again soon after the big win for you and your team. Best of luck to you guys on uh, Fight Night next week, and uh, I hope you have a great day, my friend. Thanks, buddy. All right, talk to you soon. All right, bud. Thank you. Bye. Well, there you have it, Penn Nation. One of the biggest fights in mixed martial arts history. Very well the biggest fight in the history of the sport. Just over a week away. Javier says that his guy is ready. We know Connor's ready. What a fight it should be. So much up in the air in regards to how it's all going to play out. We're all just going to have to tune in and watch October 6th, UFC 229. Very, very exciting stuff. Big thank you to both our guests, Jimmy Rivera and Javier Mendez. It's a pleasure to be here with you guys for each and every episode. Make sure you guys follow us on Twitter at BJPenRadio and also follow the website at BJPen.com. Like I said before, bookmark us, set up alerts, get that news as it breaks. We're coming up on episode 100. We're going to stack it from top to bottom as much as we possibly can for all of you guys. So be on the lookout for that. On behalf of the whole team, all of the hardworking people at BJPen.com, I'm your host, Jay Kinch, signing off till next time. We'll catch you on the flip side, everybody. Peace out.